Back in the web suite, we're now going to look at the reporting section. But before we click on reports, we're going to go into learners' portfolios just to look and see how this school is set up. In the reporting section, we might talk about OWLS class. And if I click on the plus next to OWLS class, you'll see the learners in OWLS class are grouped into different types of OWLS. I've selected a child in Barn OWLS and I'm going to click on the edit pen. At the bottom of the learner details, you've got tags and I can click within these tags and add more. When I click, previous tags that I've used will appear at the bottom. If you tag multiple children with the same tags, in the reporting section you can generate a report for all children with a particular tag. When you've added tags to a child, click on Save Changes. Now when we go back into Reports, you'll see in the main window the five different types of reports that Evidence Me will produce. We're going to start with the first one, the Flight Path Report. In here you can select the framework, the category within that framework and the objective level. You can also set the start and end dates from which the data will pull from. Over on the right you can add learners. Here you can select learners by selecting a class or group, an individual learner or using the tags. If I select a class, I can put multiples in here. It's the same with learners, I can add single or multiple learners and with the tags the same again, I can select single or multiple tags. I can also specify a year group or an age range from which I want the data to pull. I then can click on apply to apply those learners. Step three, create the report. When a report is generated, it appears below in the list of reports previously generated. We're going to pop into this one here, the early years, shape, space and measures for 40 to 60 months for barn owls, little owls and snowy owls. Here is our first flight path report. This report provides a projection to show you how far through the framework your learners will progress by a certain date. It is designed to show current coverage relative to target coverage. It shows the percentage of current coverage, forecast coverage for the rest of the year or selected dates, and indicates if all objectives will be taught by the end of the school year or not. Here you'll see a line which is our coverage target to be met by a certain date, generally the date the report is created. You'll then see on this first page the percentage of the coverage from barn owls, little owls and snowy owls already covered in a dark colour. In a lighter colour, you'll see if they carry on working as they are, the projected coverage by the end of the year. This report is based on objectives covered in observations, not necessarily objectives that have been attained. This is ideal to help you see if a cohort and individual learners are on track to cover the curriculum. It helps you plan intervention for learners who are not on track and compares cohort coverage progress. This is the first page. If I scroll down, I'll see further reports showing me individual progress for learners within each group. You'll see here, this is the Barn Owls group. If I scroll down a bit further, I'll see the Little Owls group, and further again, I'll see the Snowy Owls group. Our next report is Framework Coverage and Progress. In here, you can select the criteria for the report in the same way as for the Flight Path report, add your learners in the same way, and click on Step 3 to create the report. In the same way again, any reports created are listed underneath. I'm going to select this one this time, the Early Years Communication and Language Report for OWLS class. This time we have a multi-page report with each learner on a different page. If we scroll to the top, we'll have a look at the coverage of the report. The individual coverage report shows how well learners are progressing through the framework objectives. It shows coverage of every category for every learner and is designed to show how the learner is progressing through the objectives during the reporting period. It's great for demonstrating pupil progress as it enables you to see the cumulative percentage of the curriculum coverage for each learner. You can see what level of progress has been made between terms. If you have a look at the boxes, you'll see arrows, double arrows and dashes. You'll also see where your learners are within the curriculum based on the colours. You can use this report to demonstrate the progress levels of your learners. Identify those who are making poor progress so that you can address this and gain an overview of the coverage of the curriculum. The next report is the Teach Next report. The Teach Next report shows you which objectives currently have the least coverage for your learners. It provides a quick way to see what you could be teaching next. Again, the setup filters and ways to define the learners are the same. 
and then you generate the report which will appear underneath. This time we're going to select this one here, a report for OWLS class. On the first page we have an overall Teach Next report for the class and on subsequent pages we have Teach Next reports for each individual learner. The Teach Next report is designed to suggest which objectives a teacher should focus on based on which objectives have been covered least or not at all. The Teach Next report is ideal to help you review what you should focus on next for the given cohort or learner. It can assist with your lesson planning and help you demonstrate to interested parties what you still have to cover. Our next report is a learner observation report. Learner observation is a PDF document containing your learner's observations for a particular child or class for a selected date range. This report is great for creating children's learning journeys and you can also edit the template for this report to suit your school. Simply add the start and end date from which you want to pull the data from, choose a template and if you were here at the beginning you can select a template that you downloaded, customise and upload it again if you want to from this area here. You then can add learners and then click to create the report. We'll have a look at this first one, a report for Billy Bottomley. The look and the data pulled through to this report will depend on the template you have chosen. If I scroll down, you'll see this one's got one observation per page. The final report in here is the EYFS Cohort Assessment Report. Before we look at this report in detail, we're going to click on Assessment on the left-hand side. Here, you come to the new assessments area. We've listened to your feedback and we've now made assessments simpler and more powerful than ever. Our assessment page is much more focused on what you want to see. You can see judgments and coverage for each area of learning for any age band. You can click through to help pages or you can create a filter by clicking on this button here. I have set this up for OWLs, but you can select any class, learner, tag or year group as before. You can also filter by framework, by category and by objective level and then enter the dates from which you want the data to pull. At the bottom you have the opportunity to turn the assessment assistant on. The assessment assistant provides an at-a-glance way to see the strengths of your learners. When activated the assistant will make an entry into your assessment when learners pass the observation thresholds you have set. I've brought up the help pages here to help show what I mean. The assessment assistant will automatically make a judgement of emerging, developing or secure, depending on how many observations that objective has been tagged in for a particular learner. For example, if this objective has been tagged between one and four times for a particular learner, it will automatically set the judgement to emerging. Between five and seven times, it will automatically set it to developing and eight and over, it will set it as secure. If I scroll down here, you can also see the parameters for categories. This is the total percentage of coverage of secured objectives in the objective level or category. Going back into Evidence Me, I have clicked to apply the Assessment Assistant and I'm going to click on Apply. You'll now see the overall coverage for the learners in OWLS class in different areas of the framework. If I click on these areas to the left, I can expand the areas to see the different categories and strands within those areas. If I want to apply my teacher assessment to override the assessment assistant's judgement, then I can click on a judgement for a particular learner in a particular area. I'm taken to a screen similar to the one we saw on the iPad earlier, and we can move the smiley face to wherever we think that judgement should sit. Once our teacher assessment has been applied, the assessment assistant will no longer make judgements in that particular area. The assessment assistant will make judgements based on the learner observations that you record in the app. The assessment assistant will never override any teacher judgement you make in this area. Over on the left you'll see the edit filter button. If I click on edit filter, when I click on start period, you've got each half term in here as an assessment snapshot. You can change the judgements under each learner within each snapshot to show the progress the learners have made. I'm now going to click back to reports on the left and we'll explore the EYFS cohort assessment report. This report illustrates how closely groups of learners are matching age expectations. Again, the filters and ways to define learners are the same, and if I scroll down, I can click on the I to view the report. Here, the performance above, within and below age-appropriate levels is highlighted. You can clearly see the number of children and the percentage working below, at and above the age expectation. 
The results are based on the learner's age in months and their highest judgment in the selected assessment half term. This offers summary information for any cohort based on the judgments from any assessment snapshot that you have filled in. This brings us to the end of assessment and reporting. We're going to switch back to the iPad now and log in as a parent to see what they see. You'll see here that I'm logging into the same app with the parent credentials that I created earlier. I'm now given the opportunity to set a PIN, which I'm going to do. My PIN has been successfully set up. A parent may also be asked whether the app can access the camera and the microphone, as was the case before. The parent can create observations in a very similar way. They can add an observation without an image, with a photo from the gallery, by video, or by tapping on the camera button and creating an observation image that will move to the tray. If I tap straight away, I'll be able to edit that observation. And in the same way that I do, a parent can set the date and time and they can click to add learners. The difference here is they can only see the learners that they have access to, their children. If I go back to observation details, you've now got a parent's note field rather than objectives and other notes. Again, I can tap to edit this and a parent can add notes in here in the same way that I did earlier. When I go back to observations, that observations will now sit in the observations area, bottom left of the iPad. They can click on the plus to go back to the create screen to create further observations. You'll notice when I go into the observations area that there's an orange box that says parent submission over the observation. Now an observation has been created in parent share. When a teacher comes to the landing page in Evidence Me when they have logged in, they'll see an observation with parent submission written across the bottom. Here, they can click and view the parent submission, and if they want to add it into Evidence Me, they can click Approve at the top. Alternatively, they can reject. The teacher can click to edit the observation details, the objectives or the next steps objectives for the observation. I'm going to click on Back to return to other observations that are recent. Any observations that have been taken recently are shown in the web suite. You can click on them to make any edits you would like. Here's the one we created earlier. You'll see learners Molly and Polly are still tagged and any details we added are down here on the right hand side. If I wanted to add this parent share to this observation, I can click on the edit button next to observation details and click yes against parent share. I can then save the changes. Other things you can do with observations in the web suite are duplicate them or delete them altogether. I'm going to click back and that will save that as tagged for parent share. I'm back on the iPad, logged in as the parent. I can now see three observations. The first one that I took and I wanted to share with the teacher, my parent's submission. The second and third are the ones that the teacher took and tagged for parent share. I can tap on these observations to view them and see what my child has been doing. In the role of the parent, I can also tap under parent notes, tap to edit, and add a note to the teacher's observation if I wish. I can then return to observation details and observations to browse the other observations. Back in the web suite, if a parent has made a note against an observation and you'd like to view it, click on the observation tag parent share and you'll see the note under observation details on the right hand side. Before we exit here, I just want to mention that observations can be created in the web suite directly. You simply click add under latest observations, pop in the experience date and time and parent share, any notes, next steps or comments, and create. Under learners portfolios on the left hand side, if you were to select a class and then any learner in that particular class, you will be able to view all the recent observations for that particular learner. And if you select the plus in here, you can create an observation for that particular learner from this area. I'm now logged back into Evidence Me on the iPad as the teacher to make my last couple of comments in this area. I just wanted to highlight the little green dots on each observation. The little green dots indicate that the observation has been uploaded from the iPad to the web suite. If the observation hasn't, the dot will be red. As soon as the iPad is within an area with Wi-Fi, all the observations should automatically upload to the web suite. When I go back into an observation here, to the top right, I've got two buttons, delete and duplicate. 
It can be useful to be able to duplicate the observation so that you can add different learners and different objectives. It can also, of course, be useful to delete the observation altogether if needed. I can't finish this webinar in any other way than pointing out the fantastic help resources available from the web suite. Simply access them by going to help.evidence.me or clicking on help on the left hand side. Thank you for listening today and if you have any further questions please do get in touch. We are always happy to help.